Ray, let me ask you this. I come from a generation that unfortunately did not grow up with the Doors. That's okay. The only taste I've really gotten of them lately has been the movie. Now, I heard that your feelings on that uh, vary from a lot of people. Yeah, you haven't seen the videos. You've got to see the Soft Parade, man. That's, what, uh, that's why I put this video together. The Soft Parade is going to show you exactly what the real Doors are. The, the movie's jive. You know, the movie is a portrayal of Morrison as a jerk and a drunken alcoholic. You know, a jerk. I mean, I hate the guy in the movie. I wouldn't have anything to do with that guy in the movie. That's not Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison is in the Soft Parade. You'll see Jim predict the future. Jim Morrison was actually a nice guy. People have said to me, was he a nice guy? I said, yeah, man, he was a real nice guy. When he was drunk, he, you know, not, not so nice. I mean, most drunks are not so nice. But the real Jim Morrison was a real good human being. When did you and Jim meet? Was that, you know, was that during college? Or yeah, we were college buddies, uh, UCLA Film School. That's where we met. And uh, then we graduated from UCLA. And about a month after graduation, came back together on the beach in Venice, California. During the time, was the rock and roll that inspired by drugs, or was it, you know, just good music? No, the uh, rock and roll was not inspired by drugs. Um, and it wasn't drugs. Uh, today, it's drugs. It's, it, it's uh, cocaine and, and uh, uh, crack, and uh, that's drugs. Heroin is drugs. All the people were doing back in the 60s was smoking the herb. It was just hemp. Uh, it was just a, a mild intoxicant that would open the doors of perception. They weren't drugs. Drugs are the pills and uh, the junk that people are taking today. All we were doing was opening the doors of perception. And uh, that's where the music came from. That's where the name The Doors came from. The Beatles had opened the doors of their perception. When that album Rubber Soul came out, you could see that the Beatles, you could see in their eyes, the Beatles had ingested the sacred mushroom or something very much like it. And uh, it was a whole different consciousness. It was a consciousness, an expansion of consciousness. Tell me about what someone might find if they watch the soft parade. You're going to find uh, the real Doors, the real Jim Morris, and you'll see the passion. You'll see some uh, good musicians playing some good music and a darn good poet doing some of his poetry. Uh, you'll see the Doors on the road. Uh, the opening piece, uh, the Changeling, has the Doors on the road. Wishful Sinful is the next piece. It's got the Doors with their girlfriends, uh, Dorothy and Lynn and uh, Jim, Pam. We even have a shot of Pam. That's the only shot we have of Pam, one shot in there, and you'll see the girl, the real Pamela Curson Morrison, as opposed to uh, uh, Meg Ryan's character. And then you'll see the Doors playing the piece, The Soft Parade, hippies from 1968, a whole bunch of the background stuff is a lot of uh, the Renaissance pleasure fair. So you really get a sense of, uh, I think, what the Doors in the 60s, you'll get a brief sense of what the 60s were all about uh, in The Soft Parade. A lot of bands these days, you know, McCartney, uh, Paul Simon, uh, or the Rolling Stones, per se, they can't chop, the, you know, top the charts anymore. Do you think that the, the doors were around today, they could? Topping the charts is not the point of it. Topping the charts is, uh, is numbers, man. The point of it is not numbers. The point of it is not how much money you make, what chart position you make, how many cities you have on your tour, how many people come to see you when you play. That's not the point of it. That's numbers. Numbers are not the point of it. Vibration. I'm going to talk to you like a hippie now. Vibration is the point of it. Are you in harmony with the planet? Or are you out of phase with Mother Nature? If you can put yourself into harmony, man, you don't need a nickel. That's what uh, the, great, uh, the great mystic from the Middle East, uh, Jesus the Christ, said, you know? He was all about the vibration. You don't need money. And that's what he was talking about, the mystical Christ. You don't need money. You don't need money. You need a couple of bucks to buy your, uh, something to eat, pay your rent, get a little car, a little roof over your head. That's all you need. If you're in harmony with the planet, and that's what opening the doors of perception are all about. If you have the courage to open the doors of perception, you're going to find a whole new world inside of you, man. And numbers and money, poop out the window. Going to be pursuing music again? Are you pursuing music? What are you doing? Uh, I just did something with Michael McClure, a beatnik poet from San Francisco, uh, and uh, we put a, a video together called uh, "A Love Lion," and it's uh, piano improvisations and poetry. So uh, I, I play with the poet with Michael McClure, and actually we have been to Chicago a couple of times, but uh, it's such a big city that uh, nobody seems to know when we come and where we go. But I'm always playing music. I play at home. You know, I always 
always do something. Whether or not I want to get out into the public uh, arena, well, I don't know about that. I did that. That was a lot of fun. But just making music. Yeah, I was born. I was born in Chicago, south side of Chicago. Grew up on uh, around 35th and Western, and uh, went to DePaul, St. Rita High School. All the guys from St. Rita and uh, DePaul University. After I graduated from DePaul, I said, "That's it, man. I'm out. I'm out of here. Off to off to uh, California." If you could actually go back in time and talk to yourself 20 or 30 years to send some sort of message, what would you say to yourself? Would there be anything that you would do differently? Would there be anything that I would do differently? Probably not. I wouldn't do anything differently. And on the other hand, I would do maybe everything differently because I've already lived this life, you know, and I'm still living it. But the last 20 or 30 years uh, have been a hell of a lot of fun for me. I've had a real good time. The, what I would do differently is I would do my darndest to, uh, to try to take the bottle of alcohol out of Jim Morrison's hand so that he would still be alive. I mean, the one thing I regret in life is that Jim Morrison died and he's not around with us anymore. That's my one sadness. Do you have any anger towards the people who try and say, Jim is alive, Elvis is alive? Oh, they just want their heroes to be alive. You can't be angry with them. I mean, uh, you know, they love them so much. They love Elvis so much and they love Jim so much that they want them to be, to continue as living human beings. But they are alive. Their energy is alive. Man, I see Elvis on TV all the time. I see Jim on TV. I see, I hear Doors records on the radio. But Jim's alive, you know. He's alive in the way he'd want to be alive in his creation, in his art, in his music. If I can ask you a real personal question, mm -hmm. If you, was there anything that you wanted to say or do differently or something that you wish you could have said to Jim before the last time you saw him? I love you. Yeah, I didn't say I love you but before he left for Paris. That's what I wished I could have said to him. And what do you hope that this video, the soft parade, will do? Well, I hope it'll show you the real Jim Morrison in The Doors, and you'll understand that uh, The Doors were uh, intellectuals, poets, artists, sensitive, and good people and you'll see that Jim Morrison was a good human being to dispel the image that Oliver Stone has created of Jim Morrison. Why that Oliver Stone? I'd like to deck that guy, man. What a ridiculous movie. Why did he do it? I can't figure it out. There was an old thing called money, but... Um... But it didn't make money. That's the joke, man. People didn't go see it. You know, the first week it did great business. The next week, boom, it fell off by half. The week after that, I watched the charts to see how, how's this baby doing? Man went boom, 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 right off the charts. Nobody went to see it, you know? Where would you like to be in the next 10 to 20 years? Oh, a desert island somewhere, you know? Lying under a palm tree, uh, doing a little snorkeling and uh, having a little grilled fish and uh, a coconut and a papaya with my wife, Dorothy, and occasionally Pablo would come and visit us, our son, you know, and he'd be off doing what he does, and uh, we'd be somewhere in uh, Indonesia or something. You know, that's where I hope to be. Maybe uh, somewhere in the Philippines, one of those little islands. I appreciate the time you spent with us today and appreciate you know, setting the record straight and good luck with the video and cool, I hope to see a lot more. Okay, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks.